Hey guys, so I'm just going to show you a pretty quick tutorial of just how to make a random uh, piano player in Max MSP. And uh, it's the same thing I showed you in class, uh, but I'll be able to lay it out a little more nicely here. Um, yeah, so just getting back to what we're looking at here, this is the Max patch. Um, I've already zoomed in a little bit so that we can, you know, if I set it like this and I drag an object out, I can either do command plus plus or minus minus, or I can also zoom in up in the corner here. Um, and right now the patch is unlocked. I can grab any of these building blocks up here. There's an object, a message, a comment, a toggle. Um, and if I lock the patch, then I can't move anything around. That's more when I interact with everything. So just for the purposes of this tutorial, um, there's a little icon here that says show grid. And now when I am unlocked, you'll see that grid. And when I am locked, you will not see the grid. So you'll be able to tell the difference. Um, there's also some hotkeys for locking. So you can say I can do Command E and uh, that works as well. So I don't have to go click down here. But if you see me unlocking and locking, just know that I'm using a hotkey for that. Um, so for the first thing I want to make is, remember an object is kind of a building block of code in Max. Uh, I'm going to double click and I'm going to type make note. And it auto completes it for me. It said generate a note on, note off pair, which will allow us to generate a MIDI note. But we need one more object in order to get that to work. Uh, it's called note out. It says transmit MIDI note messages. So this is going to take our values and turn it into uh, something that's readable as a MIDI note, and this will send it out uh, to our computer as a MIDI note and play a sound for us. And the reason I know all this, um, if you remember, if I click on an object and I right click it, I can open up a help file and it shows me right here how it's set up and how it works. So I just know that these two objects work in tandem with each other a lot. Uh, and you can see it's already set up, it's kind of building out what we're going to build, but we're going to make ours a little more interactive and generative. But if I uh, take this object here, it's called a case slider, uh, and I just pull across it, we get kind of like a little bit of a piano roll kind of a effect on it. And you can see it's taking that value and it's making a note and then outputting it as a MIDI note. Um, but getting rid of all that for a second, just focusing on what we have here, the make note object is expecting three different arguments. You remember that make note is, it would essentially be, if we're doing like a pseudocode, it'd be like make note, um, and it's expecting a pitch, a velocity, and a duration. And uh, just this is a comment. I can pull that off of here. I can just hit C, and it'll automatically make one for me. Um, and with the pitch, it's expecting a value uh, roughly between zero, uh, 36 and 83. I'll get to why that's exactly that in a moment. Uh, velocity, it expects a value between one, uh, 0 and 127. And duration, it expects a value between, well, it just expects a value in milliseconds. Uh, so, we can give it an integer, it'll be in milliseconds. So this is kind of what we need to provide it with. Um, and we can tell that each of these inlets is a different part of it. I have the patch unlocked, and you see I hover over it and it says pitch, it says velocity, and it says duration. Um, so just going to this, we just need first inlet, equals pitch, equals velocity, equals duration. Now just have that nice and clean. Um, so yeah, and coming out of it, we have the pitch output and the velocity output. It send, and it'll have our note on and our note off is what the duration is telling it. Uh, but basically, we can just hook this up here. The note out's expecting the pitch. And what is this? The 
velocity output goes into the velocity for this. Um, so giving it these three values, it's going to translate it, and then we should be able to hear something when we give it those three values. Um, so I'm just going to make, if I go back up here, there is a number box. Uh, this will give us an integer. Uh, I can also type I while everything's unlocked, and it'll give me that. Uh, I can also just copy paste, and I'm just going to make some comments. I'll say pitch, and if I do a uh, command J, it'll shorten it down for me. I just like to clean up everything as I go, and I'll get that, and I'll say velocity, and I'll say uh, duration. And I'm just going to hook these up. Whatever come, whatever I hook it up, it's going to come out of that outlet and go into here. And one thing that's important to note is you think that something would be coming out, out of here every time it receives any value here. You can actually see these colors right here. I'm going to zoom in a lot right in a moment. This has um, a blue outlet around it. Or sorry, the inlet is blue, and this first inlet is uh, kind of an orange color. And there's something called hot and cold inlets. And basically, what's happening with that is anytime something is received in a hot inlet, it's going to pass the data along. And anytime anything is set, uh, to a cold inlet, it's going to store or set the data. So if I type in for the duration here, and let's say I say 1,000, and you remember that this is in milliseconds, um, you notice that we didn't hear anything because it's coming into this inlet and it's just setting it. It's a cold inlet. So it's storing that information um, and it's waiting until something comes in here until we hear something. Uh, and I can go over here and I can do 127 and also we don't hear anything and that's because it's also a cold inlet. Uh, but it's basically telling this make note object now that any pitch that comes in, uh, any note we want to make, is going to have a duration of 1000 and a velocity of 127. So now I can do like pitch 50 and you can hear that note, 40, 45, 46, and any time a value comes out of here, it's going to be passed along out of this value. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind with this whole cold inlet, hot inlet thing. Um, and this, I mean, this is cool, like, uh, you know, we can even bring up something, uh, I'm going to bring another object called a K slider. Uh, and this is pretty common in Max. Like, uh, this is actually a UI object or a user interface object. And when I hit enter on case slider, it's going to turn into what's a basically a UI object. This is still an object underneath the hood in the same way we think of it as Max. But a select few objects, once you type it in and create it, um, it's going to turn into something that you can interact with. An example of this is kind of like a a toggle. A toggle just like is basically sending out a zero or a one. Sorry, or I guess I can drop an in integer box here. For when I lock the patch. It's just a user interface version of a zero or a one. I could also just type in toggle and it would turn into that. So this one, the case slider, is meant to represent uh, what keys look like on a keyboard. And when we interact with it, it'll translate that into the MIDI note value of what that key on that keyboard is. So I can lock the patch here. You can see that now each time I click on one of these notes, it's sending that note value as a MIDI note out to pitch, and we can almost play it like a piano. Um, and again, this is cool. Now we basically have a functioning piano uh, but what we want to get into in terms of performance and whatnot, like this is fun, but like a lot of times we want to set ourselves up to allow the computer to make decisions for us. And then when the computer is making decisions for us, 
we can actually go back and we can tweak the parameters of how the computer is making that decision, how we automate it, how we generate it. And it's in controlling the parameters that we get something that becomes a little more performative. Um, so I am going to move this all down here. Uh, and for the moment being, I'm going to disconnect this case slider and just move it to the side because we don't really need it. And what I want to do is I want to create something where it's going to randomly generate the pitch. It's going to randomly generate the velocity and it's randomly going to generate the duration. Uh, and I want it to randomly generate all those values at a specific time over and over and over and over. Um, Obviously, I could do a button or a bang here, and uh, I could make another object random. And I mean, essentially, we're going to need this. I'm going to make another random, random. And we just set the values for each of these random objects. Uh, and we could hook up this bang here. And then every time I clicked on it, it would be another note that comes out. But let's say I get really tired of wanting to hit this button over and I just want someone else or I want the computer to do it essentially. Uh, there's an object that's going to become one of the most common objects you're going to see in Max, especially in video. We need it to run almost every video thing. Uh, and that's called Metro. And Metro is short for metronome. And basically we're going to give it a time interval. And every time we hit that time interval, it's going to output a bang at that interval. Um, and we can put that as the first argument after the uh, object. Each object, you know, it's receive is expecting different arguments and a lot of the most common arguments are going to be that first value or that first put a piece of data that you put after you type the object. So I'm going to put 1000 uh, and it's measuring that in milliseconds. Um, how do I know all this? Again, right click on Metro help and it shows you exactly how that object behaves. It says it's expecting a number, and you can set the time in milliseconds. Um, and so this object needs to be turned on. Uh, a lot of max objects, like you send it a zero or a one, zero will be off, one will be on. Uh, I'm going to grab this toggle, and that does it for me. It's going to return a zero or a one. And I'm just going to grab another bang right here. And now I can see if I lock the patch and I turn Metro on, every 1,000 milliseconds, or essentially one second, a bang is going to come out of there. And that, that's great. That's exactly what we want. Um, and delete that. I'm going to turn this off for a second. Because now I need to have a random value. Um, and the trick is I need those random values to be really specific numbers. Because if you remember, if we look at this, this kind of like case slider object, and I grab an integer right here in a number box um, and I lock the patch. Most of the values that are going to be in like the human hearing like range or the human hearing frequency, uh, it starts at 36 and it ends at 83 and it kind of goes through all those values in between. So if I had a zero or a value above like 83, it's probably going to be so low or so high that I can't hear it. Um, so that, let's just write that down for ourselves so we know what's going on. Uh, we'll say 36 through 83. Um, and then velocity is similar too. Like velocity is measured as 0 to 127. Uh, and then duration is, it can be almost anything, you know, like if we give it 10,000, it would give us a note to place for 10 whole seconds. We might not want that, but uh, essentially what I'm getting at is we can't just put a number in here and expect it to behave the way we want it to. We want to massage those numbers so that, and using some math, so that we get the range that behaves the best with our object and what it's expecting. Uh, so I'm going to move this back over here. So just going through this, um, let's say that no matter what with the pitch, I want to make sure that the minimum number is always 36 and not 0. Uh, and random is only set up to reset. Uh, if we put a value here, and let's say I typed 83. Let's say we wanted our maximum value to be 83. And I'm going to make another bang. And I'll grab another energy box.
and I lock that. And right away, one of our random numbers is one, and we don't want a random number of one. So this, you know, 68 is acceptable, nine, we don't want that either. So we don't want a random number between zero and 83. We want a random number between 36 and 83. Um, so if I bring up calculator, very quickly, just I, I don't even want to do the math in my head. And I say, what is um, 83 minus 36? And so what we actually want is a number between 0 and 47. So I'll go back here and I'll say random 47. But I'm going to make another object. I'm just going to type the plus sign. And you can do any basic math with an object if, it's, if a number is coming through it. So I can just do plus, and I'll give it the number that I want to add to it, and that's 36. And now any, ob any number coming in through this inlet is going to, be, it's going to have 36 added to it. So I'm going to unhook that, hook that up, and I'll lock that patch. And now we've actually set our range to be between 36 and 83, and that's great. Uh, I can get rid of this part, and I can get rid of this part. Uh, actually, I'll keep the bang right there just so we can visualize it. And now the metro is hooked up to that. Just trying to get everything all in order. I do this a lot where I just clean up things as I go and try and get it all lined up perfectly. Uh, and now if I lock the patch and I turn this on, every one second we get a new random note that's played for us. And the velocity is 127 and it's the max volume and the duration is one exactly one second. Um, and, you know, that's great, but let's say I want to have more control of how often it plays the notes. Then I can just grab another integer box here, and this second inlet here, if I hover over, it says met, set metronome time interval. So this thousand that I wrote into the object, that's kind of how you hard code. Like if I saved the patch and I opened it, this would be the initial behavior that tells it, this is, this is what I want for the argument. But anytime I send a value into here, it's going to override this and give it this value instead. And it, oops, sorry, wrong button. Uh, I go down to lock this, and I turn this on. And now I'm actually going to set it so that it plays a note every one tenth of a second. Now we have something that's much more chaotic and much quicker and much faster. Uh, and like, I actually don't need to like unlock and lock it every time I want to interact with it. If it's locked and I turn this on, I can just grab this and scrub it around like this. have a tool that we can play with that allows us to perform with this a little more. Uh, we can play with the speed at which it is, if it's much more chaotic or if it's much slower and more thought out. Um, I'll set this back to 200, eh, maybe 400. Um, and that's great, Like, but now it's playing every single note the same length of time and the same volume, and I want to like add some more into it in terms of like how soft it is, how short the note is, uh, and I want to mix all these all together, so I'm going to do the same thing over here. Um, I could do random 127. Uh, the problem is, I let's say I don't. I want to make sure that there's always some note that's played. I don't. I don't ever want to have a muted note. So if I had a velocity of zero, uh, that wouldn't really work for us. So we're going to do the same thing we did over here, and I'm going to do random 100. But I'm also going to make another addition object. I'm going to add 27 to it. So now our floor is always going to be 27. And our maximum is going to be 127. I'm going to do the same thing over here. For duration, I want to make sure that there's always some level of how long it plays. If I sent it a duration of zero, we'd never hear it. So I can't just do random 1,000. Uh, let's say I do random 900, and I add 100 to it to make sure that we always have a minimum of 100 or 1 tenth of a second and a maximum of every, uh, a maximum of one second. And I'm just going to 
copy paste these. Now hook up the Metro to it. And now, if I lock the patch and I play it, now we have even more variation. I can I can still control how fast it plays or how soft it plays. Um, but let's say I want to add up. I want to add more control. Like this is nice. We got some variation. But I want to say I say I want to limit the range of uh, notes that we can play, or I want to limit the range of how long each one can be, or each note is played for. Um, I'm gonna hook this up to here just so I can we can visualize what's happening a little. Uh, I'm gonna move these over a tiny bit. Just give it some space. And much like how Metro can have its initial uh, argument overridden by this, random's the same way. Even though it's a 47 here, hard-coded as like what its range is, I can set a new range by giving it an integer into its right inlet. Um, so I'm gonna, oops, sorry, wrong, wrong one there. I'm gonna grab one here. I'm gonna hook that up to here. And remember that our minimum note is always gonna be 36. So now, keep hitting the wrong one there. Uh, if I hit play, you can see that it's going to full range across this keyboard. But if I hit play again, and I type three here, now there's a range of only three notes that can be played. I can type 10. And right away, now we have another tool that not only can we play, determine how fast or how slow this plays, we can determine the range of how many notes that it's playing as well. Um, and we can do the same thing over here. Uh, rather than have it be a length of a uh, maximum of one second, I could guarantee that every note only plays for a maximum of 200, or, sorry, it's 200 milliseconds, uh, one-fifth of a second, or 100 milliseconds, which is one-tenth of a second. You can see just with these three things, with um, this is essentially speed, this is pitch range, and this is duration range. Now we have an instrument that we have control over three different parameters for. And this kind of thinking, this kind of way of building a max is what we're gonna to take to our video performance as well. Um, basically, we're building these systems that do certain things, and then the performativity of it can come from exposing different parameters and turning those parameters into things that can be controlled by physical gestures, that can be controlled by Arduino, that can be controlled by user interface objects, that can be controlled by Perlin noise. Um, and it's all about us to build these systems out and to find like what are the parameters, what are the arguments that I can change that changes the behavior of how all of this works and how it all plays so that I end up with a kind of an expressive tool where I can express my own idea of uh, what I want my performance to be like. Um, so yeah, if there are any questions, just shoot me an email and uh, let me know. There's all this code you can get through and I'll be adding in more next week. So yeah, have fun.